What you are seeing in this image is from last week, where a giant Pachyrhinosaurus skull had been extracted from its bone bed after a year of progress. This fossil was found 50 years ago by a high school teacher and caught attention 10 years after it was found. This specimen now calls the museum home and has already been given a name, introducing Big Sam. This Pachyrhinosaurus specimen represents the Pachyrhinosaurus acousti species and lived around 70 million years ago during the monstration stage of the late Cretaceous and they were not alone in their final moments. In the bone bed, there were also 100 to 300 bones per square inch, meaning that Big Sam was with a herd before and when they died. First, let's talk about how Big Sam died with other members in their herd. There are many ways a uh, Ceratopsian could die, either catching a deadly disease, being taken down by predators, age, getting fatally wounded in combat with another member for the right to mate, and many more. But given how there were other members in the herd that died with Big Sam at the same time, almost all of these are not very likely to be the cause of Big Sam's death. It had been said that Big Sam's remains were upside down and surrounded by other Pachyrhinosaurus remains, those being from its herd. So how could a Ceratopsian die and fossilize upside down along with others from its herd at the same time? It could be either a coincidence or the most likely cause of this Pachyrhinosaurus death, drowning. Yes, many Ceratopsians fell victims to drowning. This could be by crossing rivers or dying during floods. Granted, there were also predators in the waters big enough to take on a Ceratopsian as well, but there was no damage belonging from an underwater predator to prove that Big Sam was taken down by one of them. Mass drownings happened to other herds, including other Pachyrhinosaurs, Centrosaurus, etc. And each of these resulted in bone beds full of drowned Ceratopsians. So this is most likely the same story for Big Sam and the other members that died with them, although there could have been another possible cause. This is the most plausible theory of Big Sam's death. And after millions of years of being underground, their skull had been found, extracted, and now settled in a museum, where we can now get a good look at this beautiful giant. Big Sam wasn't named for no reason. Their skull alone weighed 272 kilograms, the size of a baby elephant. But how about we try to see how big this Pachyrhinosaur specimen could have been in total. Big Sam's skull weighs 272 kilograms, as I said. We'll also use the skull of its bigger relative, Triceratops Prorsus, to help us out, given how it has a similar shape to Pachyrhinosaurus. Their skull could weigh around 450 kilograms. Triceratops Prorsus reaches around 8 tons in average weight, making their skull 5.6% of their full mass. Since the skull mass is 5.6% of full mass, let's divide 100 by 5.6, where we get 17.8. 85, where we will multiply that mass number with it. Big Sam's skull weighs 272 kilograms, so we multiplied the mass number by 17.85, giving us 4,855.2. This means that the total mass of Big Sam is around 400, no, 4,805.5 to kilograms, or 4.8 tons, reaching almost 5 tons. This isn't the best way to find out the weight of an animal though, so do not see this as the actual mass. We might get other results, but we do know Big Sam is a big Pachyrhinosaurus, but can they surpass 5 tons? The answer is, most likely. The flesh and skin could increase the number of mass, and you know when they can reach numbers close to another number, you know they're almost certain to reach that number. Who knows what else lies in the way to be discovered. Maybe another larger Pachyrhinosaurus specimen could be waiting in that bone bed. Either way, Big Sam has proven Pachyrhinosaurus can be much larger than we originally thought, and that the genus could push itself higher into the leaderboard of the largest ceratopsians on the planet.